There were no women in the room. And no, I'm not talking about some uh, musty locker room, musty men's locker room, or worse, my brother's disgusting bedroom, <laughs> where no woman in her right mind would be caught dead. <laughs> you can tell I love my brother very much. Yes. <laughs> no, this was a meeting about a new women's outdoor brand, who the customer was, how to market and sell to her, and ultimately service her needs. The results of that exercise were predictably hollow, but, none, but no less disappointing. The best idea that five old, bald heads <laughs> could come up with was, drum roll please, <laughs> the girlfriend oh. of the real outdoorsman who was just there to accompany him on his outdoor adventures and really just needed to look the part. I wish I could say that this was uncommon or even the worst of it, but I worked for one of the biggest apparel manufacturers in the world with revenue in the billions and a smaller one that I'm sure none of you have ever heard of but is no less problematic culturally. And in each case, women were excluded from strategic conversations about the things that women wear every day but no less expected to keep the revenue coming in and ultimately keep the money coming, um, keep the business running. Instead of ultimately designing for Instead of designing, desi bleh, deciding <laughs> to design for maybe a Jen who could have regaled us with her time uh, climbing Mount Everest or Sarah who was going to hike the AT um, for her 30th birthday with her best friend or even a Brittany who maybe is a little newer to the industry but no less excited to get involved, um, their decision was just extremely hollow. And so I started Tough QD as a way to support working women uh, from the ground up. My story is a little bit uh, different. There's probably many of you here who viscerally identify with a Sarah or a Jen. Um, I grew up in Las Vegas. I was the youngest of four uh, children. I had three brothers, so if you want to talk tough, that's where a lot of that comes from. Um, and we were, uh, you know, my mom dealt with various issues um, with drugs and other vices and, you know, we were sporadically homeless and I, and I don't say that to make you feel bad or, or anything of that sort, but it's more so just so that you understand her priorities were not carting like four kids to the mountains or to go hiking or, you know, it just wasn't a reality for me for the, for the majority of my life, but I do no wrong when I see it. Um, and those men were just dead ass wrong, and so I uh, just I literally made it my business to do something about it, and so that is how Tough Cutie was born. Uh, so so we exist to support working women uh, from the ground up in all the ways that we work, um, whether that's as athletes, entrepreneurs, caregivers, and everything in between. And we started with our first style, Eve. Um, the original ladies lightweight hike, merino wool hiker crew. I gave her the longest name possible because those men gave her no name at all. Yeah. <laughs> and let me just tell you a little bit about what makes her special. So I, all of the judges, you guys should have samples right in front of you as well as a little, as well as a little one pager as well. Um, but we, we like to say Eve is made for the perfect hike. So this is an extremely technically designed sock. Um, this isn't something that you can go down to a, like a Walmart or a Target and get. Um, we put a lot of thought and effort into every single feature that's, that's in this product. So um, she's got 360 degree arch support that's really there to keep your body aligned and balanced. Um, she's got this cushioning. It's very select cushioning so it doesn't go throughout the whole sock, uh, throughout the whole sock, you know, you don't want like an ag aggressive cushioning. You don't want to feel like you're su suffocating in your shoe when you put it on, but you just want it in the, the right places. And so we put it at the, um, you know, the top of the foot as well as the heel. Um, she's got flex grooves as well as a Y heel, which exists to really cup your foot so that it's not sliding when you're walking, um, as well as a very, very um, durable spandex that we've put throughout the leg to keep it from falling down. So one of the most annoying things is when you're, when you're walking and you're constantly doing this, 
right? Like this is, that's not going to happen with, um, with this style. And then we've also got um, a very flat toe seam to keep from just catching if, you know, some of us maybe haven't had a chance to take care of some things on our feet and, you know, you want to make sure that it's just not going to cut through a couple of, <laughs> a couple of, <laughs> you know, we all busy so I understand. <laughs> So we got that flat toe seam. And then the very last thing is uh, we've added this dual tone mesh throughout the top of the foot. So that is that exists to really make sure that um, in addition to the, more, the naturally moisture wicking um, fibers of merino wool that you get in this product, you're also letting air escape and that is really there to keep blisters away. So if you're running a long time um, and you're really out there, you know that eventually that rubbing um, is going to contribute to not only your stinky feet, but also just some, some really nasty blisters. So we also added the mesh there as well. Um, another thing that's important about Eve is she's manufactured right here in the United States by a women-owned factory. It's probably one of the only women-owned factories in the U.S. Yeah. Fourth generation, three sisters. Um, it's a wrap certified factory as well, and it's not just uh, women led, but women uh, run. About 70% of the business is also women in the factories. Um, and the, not just the factory, but we try with our packaging and other programs to work with other women as well. So the packaging that it comes in is also coming from a women owned um, company. And we've got a couple other programs as well that I can talk about during the Q&A, if you want, maybe, uh, <laughs> to ask me about it. That's cool. Um, and I you know, definitely want to um, you know, share those additional details with you around our marketing, around our costs and lead times. Got some great answers coming at you in just a few <laughs> seconds when you're ready to ask me those questions. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you one of those questions. <laughs> what I am going to ask is, um, why socks? Why did you start with socks? Because uh, that's, that's the industry that I know and kind of grew up in. I used to manage, uh, for a long time I worked at a sock company on their PLM system. So yeah. looking, all of, looking at all of their um, design operations and how to make them more efficient. Uh, working with designers, production, sourcing factories, um, and then got the opportunity to become the brand manager for um, that sock brand I was telling you about, uh, the, just this, the sock component of that brand, and you know that really created an interest in just managing a, a brand, and I wanted to do it myself after you know what I shared with you before. Okay, I will ask you about your packaging. Yeah. And <laughs> um, so, packaging, aesthetic, yeah. the fact that they're engineered, they're made in the U.S., how are you competing with the larger companies that are doing this? Yeah, so we haven't gone into production yet. Where it's approved for production, and I can talk to you a little bit about those, those challenges in a sec, but um, what we think is going to be the differentiator at the, point, at the point of sale with our target customer. Um, is, is our story, is our value. Um, most of the men, most of the companies who play in the outdoor sock space are run by men, and they, we believe that they market to women because women have feet. Um, <laughs> but, we, <laughs> but we're doing it for something totally different. I mean, I've, I've given samples to you know various people and what they've said is, oh yeah, my dad buys me smart wool, or my dad buys me darn tough, or whatever, you know, whoever the, the bigger guys are. Um, but this, this brand really aligns to my values, and it's important to me to make this purchase. We don't anticipate taking up, a, you know, their whole stock drawer overnight. That's not like, <laughs> it's not realistic. And I even, I wear all kinds of products still too, but um, that's where we think we're going to compete is having that emotional connection and backing it up with the value that you get with our product. Plan. Sorry, am I interrupting you, Alice? No. Oh, um, so I'm looking at your packaging. And I'm assuming this is just a proto. And you've got yeah. Some. So that's yeah. So our, our packaging lead times are only two weeks, and because we're we're not in production yet, um, we just have the simple bands for now. If you look on your this guy here, it details out all of the features and benefits that will eventually go on the packaging, um, and that'll be very clear for the consumer to understand um, on top. But our our 
Our strategy is really act local, think global, mm -hmm. and so we are planning to go to some select specialty brick and mortar retailers in our local community where we can establish a relationship and, and still have control over the image just by being local. Yeah. Um, but ultimately we want to compete online through this program you see here, it's called the Buy One Give One Parity Promise Program. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a subscription program, that's what we're driving towards. So. Um, at the core of who we are is really t uh, really about parity and we obviously like spelled it a little differently for, <laughs> for this purpose but um, our BHAG, our big hairy audacious goal, it's why we exist, um, going back to that story is just making sure that women are in the room, making sure that um, they're there to tell the story and that's parity again everywhere. It's, it's, it's in the boardroom, it's on the field, it's you know it's, it's everywhere where men are, women need to be there too, making decisions. And so um, our, our buy one, give one parity promise has four components to it. We give a bonus pair and we let women um, do with it as they will. They can keep it for themselves, so we're really big on self-care. So if you don't want to give it away, that's cool. Um, you can give it to someone you know, maybe your girlfriend, your sister, your mom. Um, we will have a database of women that you know who, who interact with our marketing uh, touch points who will be giving you know, samples to as a part of various campaigns, so you can do that. Or uh, we also give the option to donate it to a homeless woman in need. So we've given four ways in which women can donate that bonus pair, um, but incentivizing them to pay up front through this subscription program, which helps us with our cash flow and our forecasting, um, but also just, um, you know, Keeps, keeps our pulse on the customer as well because they are going to probably forget that they ordered this thing and get it in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Just a quick question. Do they come in different sizes? Yes. Small, medium, and large. I have been schooled on extended wide calf sizes, so that is in the plan, and I know, I know what's up, so. Yeah. <laughs> and will you tell us about the price? Yeah, so it costs us uh, six dollars to make. We're looking at a, a ten fifty wholesale price with an MSRP of twenty dollars. But it puts both your margins and our margins between the forty in the forty percent range for this. Uh, we love to get the cost down as well, um, but just you know, merino wool doesn't it's not cheap, <laughs> and you um, doing it ethically in the U.S. is also not not cheap. But what are your lead times? So if you were to get an order. Yeah, yeah, 90, November, so. yeah, so uh, between 90 and 120 days is what we're looking at for lead times. Um, our factory is actually in the process of doubling their capacity, um, we just heard, and so that is a great thing, but it also comes with challenges when you double your capacity. You have to train people, you have mm -hmm. to make sure that the quality is not slipping and all of that, but just based on today's capacity, it would be 90 to 120 days. How are they doubling their capacity? They're buying additional machines, and then they're bringing on additional uh, workers and training them on how to use how to use them. They're they're not It'll traditional. Be on one roof. Yes, yeah. So they're not traditional cut and sew sewing machines. They're very particular circular knitting machines. That's mm -hmm. you know if you think about how your leg is it's in a circle, so um, it takes a particular skill set to do that. Have you did you start with this factor? Or did they make your yeah. samples? And have, did you mm -hmm. overcome some? Can you tell me about some QC issues that you had early on and how? You manage that. Um, so we've been with this factory the whole time. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say that we've had quality issues yet. Um, hopefully we won't, because we're not. We're not quite in production just yet. And so from a the, the more challenging part, I think, has been um, on the MOQ side and just us us building this business, knowing that we want to start small, but um, we're in fundraising mode really, and we're uh, talking to people who are going to be able to. Um, in, invest in us, both our factory and a couple other investors who are looking for strategic partners, like Title IX, for if we had that, mm -hmm. <laughs> drop that there, um, um, to be able to make the first investment. So the, the, the MOQs, I say, are a little bit higher than traditional apparel, um, but I mean we're working we're working through that. Yep. Um, okay, so I'm a design director. Yeah. Just design everything. But everything I consider in design has to have a, a meaning or a purpose. Yeah. So I wanted to, I noticed that your colors are your brand colors, right? Mm hmm Are you planning to have more colors than that? Like. So we do have a couple different blue. There's another blue that I haven't, that I didn't give it to you. Um, there's, there's seven colors in total. Oh, right uh, yeah, she's wearing the blue. There's a pink one and a black and a gray. Yeah, and there's a dark blue um, as well. 
So we do have a, a variation in colors. Um, you, when you have to start dyeing colors at the, at the yarn level, those minimums kick in even higher. So we're trying to just be very conservative initially with that. Thanks but for if listing Tina, the colors. Yeah. I didn't have my glasses on. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's okay. That's okay. Um, and then in terms of marketing, in case you were curious, if anyone wanted to ask me that question. Uh, <laughs> I have a question on marketing. <laughs> Tell us about your marketing strategy. <laughs> yes. So uh, we are actually going to be starting a YouTube channel, um, a show. So oh. any, has anyone seen Miranda in the Wild? Mm, um, yeah. So yeah. it's a show by REI. Um, I wish you guys could see that. You guys can see the picture on here. But um, taking my story again of starting more so in this corporate space, but making the transition to um, really embracing the outdoor space. Um, it's tentatively called Boardroom to Backcountry is what this show is going to be called. Um, and so I'm going to be taking the 52 hike challenge. And so throughout that, chronicling my experience of just learning, doing it, being out there, um, and, and meeting women along the way. So, um, for example, we'll be working with um, this woman named Myja Williams. So she was the first female athletic trainer for the Harlem Globetrotters. Um, so she's going to come on the show. We have a couple other influencers as well. I'm hoping to make it to Alaska. Yes! I'll come on my show. Maybe Tyler and I don't come on my show. I don't know. I mean, it's like, but um, okay. that's the biggest thing, um, you know. And we feel like by doing it that way, having those types of guests, we can have also just different conversations about mm -hmm. business, not just being outside, but just other things about about business. Um, you know, I've been interviewing some other um, black women actually in the outdoor space to talk about what are you, what are the barriers, what are the things you're thinking about, and they are saying. You know, sometimes one of the reasons I don't go outside is because I have natural hair and I'm terrified of something falling in there and getting lost and I just don't, I can't, I can't. So how are we going to, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a real, it's a real challenge. So like have, having those types of conversations along with just like my experience of going to these different, um, different locations for hikes. So I think those are all the questions I needed. You guys